In this example, we have a functional group here. This is one of the ones we've discussed already. This is called an ester functional group. And here we can draw a resonance structure. Whenever you have esters or carboxylic acids, whenever you have this COO in there, uh, these are always good candidates you can draw resonance structures. And the reason for that is because you do see the double bond here in the allelic position. We have lone pairs of electrons. So here's another two arrow process. We can take a lone pair, move them in between the atoms. So we're going to draw a double bond here and then pi electrons here pointed towards the atom where they're going. So this becomes a single bond. There's a double bond here with one lone pair. On this oxygen, we have three lone pairs now. And of course, you should always check the formal charges have changed. So we watch closely here. Both oxygens have two bonds and two lone pairs. So the formal charges are zero. But when the electrons move, now we're not breaking any rules, so this is a valid Lewis structure. This is a resonance structure. However, we do notice that we have formal charges now. Look at your notes and understand these trends. Oxygen with three bonds and a lone pair is a positive formal charge. And oxygen here with one bond and three lone pairs is negative. Now this brings up another question. Are these resonance structures equal? And the answer is no. This is what we call the major contributor. And this would be called the minor. And the reason for that is because Molecules will be more stable when the octets are full and we minimize the formal charges. And so in this case, both molecules have their octets full, but here we minimize the formal charge. There's zero formal, formal charge on all the atoms. Here we do have formal charge. So this is a valid resonance structure. However, they're not equally as stable. This would be the major contributor this would be the minor contributor.